So today we're going to be making these cute fall jars and you're going to need the following supplies. Of course, your scan and cut machine and accessories. You're going to need some jars. I need four of them, uh, some gold craft vinyl, acrylic paint, of course, everything you need for painting, brushes, uh, you know, paper towels, anything like that. And then you're going to need embellishments to be able to, um, you know, tie a ribbon or raffia around the neck of the bottle um, and fill it up with some goodies. Now I went ahead and created this design already for you, so make sure you download it to be able to do this project. So once you have that file downloaded, you can go ahead and open it up in Canvas Workspace and then go ahead and send it over to your Scan and Cut using that export, that transfer uh, function to be able to send it over your Wi-Fi network. So I went ahead and put a piece of vinyl on here. It's five inches by 12 inches wide. And I'm just going to go ahead and line up my mat with those little bumpers right there and then hit that mat button and that will load it in. Okay, so we're going to retrieve that design that we sent over to our Scan and Cut. Remember, I sent it via my computer, so we're choosing that option. And there it is. Okay, so I'm going to click OK. It looks great. Go ahead and press Cut. Now, because this is vinyl, we want to be able to cut through that top layer of vinyl, but not through the backing holding it all together. So we need to change the half cut to be on. So to do that, we're going to click on that wrench and then scroll down to where it says half cut and choose on. And then make sure your half cut pressure is auto if you're using Brother Vinyl. And then click OK. And everything looks good. Make sure that vinyl stuck on there and hit start. Okay, so once that's finished, click OK and unload. Okay, now we can just take our vinyl off of here, set our mat aside, and now we want to weed out our letters. So the part that we want to keep is the leaf, okay? Everything else needs to go. So go ahead and separate the backing from the vinyl. Okay, then you just want to slowly pull it. Okay, and now we have the letters to take off. Okay, so there's our letters that we need to put on our jar. Okay, so I'm gonna cut these apart. And then I need some of this grid transfer uh, paper or transfer tape, however you wanna call it. Let's see how big that is. Okay, so now let's just do one of these at a time. We're going to take our gridded transfer tape off of the backing, but hold on to that because these are reusable so you can use it until its stickiness is gone. Okay, and I'm just going to place it over my letter. So 
you can see it's on there. And then I like to use either, you know, my nails or a spatula, something to be able to burnish it, to rub all over the letter. And that will cause your transfer tape to be able to pick it up so that you can transfer it onto your jar. Okay, so just go slowly peeling that off, making sure everything's stuck. And then grab one of your jars. Now, anytime I'm working, putting vinyl on something, I like to have a little bean bag to be able to put my jar, in this case, on. Um, just to hold it steady. So if you have something like that, great. If you don't, um, you can anchor it with something heavy on both sides to keep it from rolling while you get everything situated. So we're gonna have all these jars lined up and since it says a word, we want the letter to be in relatively the same place on the jar, not um, superly off um, being higher or lower. So go ahead and take a ruler and um, look at where the center of your jar is and you're going to take a marker and just make a little mark there. Now the great thing with glass is you can use um, either acetone or alcohol to be able to remove most permanent markers and you can test yours out on the bottom of your jar if you need to know uh, if it will come off your jar or not. Okay so I'm going to make a mark on mine. Okay, so I have that little dot. I don't even know if you can see it. <laughs> Trust me, there's a little dot right there. Okay, so I'm gonna put my jar on my bean bag and then go ahead and take my letter. And remember, I want that dot to be about in the center of my letter. Okay, so I'm just gonna gently lay it on there and now we're going to take our uh, spatula and do that same thing. We're going to burnish right over it. And then slowly go ahead and remove that transfer tape. Voila. We have that on there. Uh, if you have any little air bubbles, you can usually just smooth those out, kind of push them to the edge and they will um, escape. And so I'm going to continue on doing that to the rest of my jars and then I'll meet you back for the next step. Okay, so now we're ready to get started painting these. Now you could definitely carefully paint the outside um, but I really like the way it looks when you paint the inside of these jars um, because that gives the outside that shine um, without you having to pour like resin over it or anything complicated. Um, it just looks really pretty and um, colorful. So to get started, obviously I have a glove. I'm only using one and um, a foam paintbrush and then I'm just using acrylic paint. So you can just take a big glob of it, put it on your brush. So I like to start with the bottom and work my way up. And I also start on the back side too, because I have this big old glob. Now we're going to paint everything um, from bottom to top, except for where that letter F is. Okay, so I'm going to turn it over and start over here. And if you're like me and have pretty narrow hands, you can probably fit it in there to be able to reach down to the bottom but if you don't then obviously use a paintbrush with a, a longer handle on it. So I'm just going to work my way up uh, when I get to behind the leaf um, I'm just going to you know paint that in. It doesn't have to be perfect um, especially this first coat as you can see it's a <laughs> kind of see-through transparent um, and that's okay. This is just our first coat. <clears throat> it's going to take a few more um, to get this finished. I more or less rotate the jar and not my brush. So then you'll probably need to add some more paint. I 
again, just very careful around the letter. And if you do happen to get any um, where there's not supposed to be paint, you can always use a brush that has not been dipped in paint, a dry brush, um, or even a Q-tip or anything like that um, to be able to get at that and clean it off. So this is a really easy project. I've also painted the inside of these of jars, whether it's little um, tiny candle, glass candle holders, like tea light holders, or jars like this um, with kids, and they really love doing it. Now, depending on the age of kids, they might get a little bored having to do a bunch of coats of them. But if you have a little bit of older kids, they catch on to the concept really quick. Um, and they like to see that quick progress of, um, you know, being able to being able to put the layers on their jars. Okay, so I'm just going to do inside the neck right here. Okay, now I'm going to leave that to dry out and then uh, put another coat or two on the inside. Now, a handy tip um, with your paintbrush, because we're going to be doing layers, is to get a little baggie and stick it in and then you can zip it up most of the way except for where the handle is and that will keep it from drying out um, while you wait for that to dry and then once everything's dry you can go ahead and do all your embellishment of filling up those jars um, a great filler is popcorn or candy or anything like that that'll uh, really put out those fall vibes For more information about Skin and Cut, visit skinandcut.com. And for more ideas and inspiration, visit erinbassett.com.